Good morning, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a Grand Solar Minimum update on Thursday, November 7th, 11 a.m. Mountain Time, 2019. We have the latest GFS model showing heavy snow across Canada, starting with a little blast for the northeast in the next few days. We also have snow for southwestern Texas, and the southeast is going to be picking up some of its first snow, maybe even down into Georgia. It is Winter Hazard Awareness Week, and winter weather is on the horizon. That shouldn't be there. Several blasts of Arctic coal will bring an early winter to millions across the U.S. Hasn't this been happening already? Arctic blasts will bring major cold air to the Midwest, Northeast, setting up measurable snow chances, and they're laughing about it. Ha <laughs> ha. Accumulating snow for southeast Minnesota. Record cold possible next week. Rochester could pick up two to four. Parts of Alberta are getting 25 centimeters of snow and extreme cold weather tonight. Lows will dip to minus 21C in Edmonton. Minus 13 in Calgary. There's that snow. Heavy snow in British Columbia on the coast too. Take a look at these models. And also the Sierras even coming in to pick up a little tippy touch of snow down there. That could be in the next week. Overall, a general snowy pattern for the entire country. A taste of winter expected for the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. Back-to-back -back shots of winter-like temperatures will grip the eastern two-thirds of the U.S. over the next week with much below normal conditions. The first cold shot is surging into the south and east today while producing some locally heavy rain and, and snow from the Great Lakes to New England. The next plunge will arrive Sunday across the upper Midwest and press south and east for early next week. Keep your eye on it. 30 inches of new snow in the high Alps. According to Snowbrains, two French ski areas, Tignes and Val Thorns, reporting over 30 inches of new snow as of Wednesday, November 6th. Many other resorts reporting up to two feet of freshies across the Alps this week with more on the way. It is winter weather warning week after all. Seismic update 3.4 kicking off in Ventura after a 3.5 just to the east in Ridgecrest. No other quakes of note. We do have some volcanic activity to report on. Heard Island Volcano news and activity. New eruption in lava flow. A new eruption is in progress at the volcano since the end of October. Strong thermal signs indicate the presence of lava, erupting four out of five. Also, Meta Shoals creating a new island. And Popo puffing to 20,000. Go check the links for more info. More than 11,000 scientists declared global climate emergency in a signed letter. As the October numbers come out, record cold across the U.S., Except for Florida, they were the winner in the heat. But the rest of the country in blue. Links will be below. Mud in storied ice cores hints at a thawed Greenland. This paper coming out November 1st basically talks about how a ice core had been ignored, had been revisited recently. And scientists can now use isotopic swings in the mud, which they found at the core's bottom, which would be during an ice-free period of Greenland, to date it, potentially. And it's probably recently, less than 100,000 years, Greenland was ice-free, according to this core, and I'm sure more information will be coming out. The paper will be linked below. It's just the abstract. The world's thickest mountain glacier is finally melting, and climate change is 100% to blame. Well, how come it just started melting now? Why didn't it start melting 10 years ago or 20 years ago? If you haven't learned any, if you've learned anything from this channel, it's that natural climate variability is king. Everything is cyclic. Glaciers grow, they retreat, and they grow again. And this glacier had been growing for decades. And it, it is slowly showing a retreat and now they want to blame it on you. It wasn't your fault when it was growing last year. It's your fault that it's retreating this year. And we're talking about the Taku Glacier and Alaska's Juno Field. Come read the nonsense for yourself. Links will be below. Mycologist Paul Stamets discovers all-natural pest-fighting fungi. 
and it's in his store. And he has specific insect targeting fungi that when the bugs eat his uh, pesticide, they die from the inside out because the fungus eats them. It's amazing stuff. It's completely non-toxic, harmless to humans, and is going to put some of these chemical companies, you know, give them a run for their money. So if you're interested in the wonderful world of mycology, come check out what Paul Stamets has to offer in the world of pesticides. Peroxynitrate, a dangerous link between GMOs and Wi-Fi. I'll leave you links to the article. Now let's talk about poisonous food that you're eating, like GMOs. Vegetables sold at HEB, Kroger, and Walmart and others have been recalled for listeria contamination. Now this has happened before. But when you look at the number <coughs> of brands and products that have been affected by this outbreak, your mind will be blown. Probably hundreds of thousands of pounds, tons and tons of cauliflower and vegetable, broccoli, medley, all the way from organic to the cheap stuff, all potentially contaminated. While we already have crop losses and food shortages worldwide, now we have that the limited amount of food available becoming tainted by the industry. Thank you, man's brands. And that's not only it. That is not it. Chicken recall. Why did I just, I didn't want to X that out. <laughs> chicken recall. More than 2 million pounds of chicken was recalled the same day that the Listeria outbreak hit. Now, these are contaminated with metal. Isn't that disgusting? How do you contaminate chicken with metal? Two million pounds of chicken contaminated with metal. More than two million pounds of chicken are being recalled because the poultry may be con contaminated with extraneous materials, specifically metal. I love it when I ingest metal. Oh, that's we're saving that for last. Transit of Mercury, coming up. It told us the scale of the universe because this little tiny dot goes in front of the sun. There it is to scale. It basically blows your mind. Uh, and Rex Bear is going to be setting up a live stream of this transit, hopefully, if it lines up correctly to our night here. And we won't see this transit until 2032. Now, I happen to see it in 2016, but we're going to be watching it live this year. So stay tuned for updates um, about the transit. Oh, look at that. So this is an, a great paper if you want to bone up on some information on when we discovered the earth wasn't flat. <laughs> a third of California's methane is traced to a few super emitters. No, they're not underwater volcanoes. No, it's not Yosemite. It's not Long Valley Caldera. It is not Yellowstone. It is the oil and gas industry, and they are leaking methane hundreds of sources and there are some super emitters look at these large pink areas that's the super emitter region and this is the oil and gas industry polluting our planet not you not co2 methane archaeology shock ancient settlement discovered in florida changes the course of history now they discovered that thousands of people lived in florida a thousand years ago unheard of Sounds like, anyway. Now, one of our supporters sent us in this uh, blog here on the ancestral calendar of Mexico. And what they've determined is that the end of the fifth sun occurs in 2078 AD. Just saying. Another study reveals that humans migrated from Europe to the Levant after the Le Champ magnetic excursion. Yes, there will be migrations, and we're going to be studying them tomorrow, where we have a private guided tour at the Mesa Prieta Petroglyph Project. We have to be there at the crack of dawn, and we'll be reporting on some of our findings tomorrow night, where there are the largest concentration of ancient glyphs in all of North America. It's estimated that in just a few square miles, there are over 100,000 different pictographs. What did the ancient Puebloans use 
on those ancient highways. What did they see in the sky? We may answer some of these questions tomorrow. Join us. Hope you got something out of the video. It's cold. And it is Winter Hazard Awareness Week. So bone up on your knowledge. And be safe. We love you. That's a bone.